from my given disaster Speed away from the holy mind Pride That's where I never thought it would matter If I'm gone by now And then of course, like, hello, I'm like every other mom. I always serve my kids organically sourced boxed macaroni and cheese. We have different variations of it depending on the day. This is actually delicious. So hey friends, we're here and thank you so much for stopping by. For today's video, I am doing a what's for dinner. So today I'm gonna show you what we've eaten for dinner throughout this past week. And I'm doing it all inspired by the fabulous defined dish so if you haven't tried her recipes off of her blog or out of her cookbook oh my gosh they're like out of this world and they're all whole 30 inspired or healthified weeknight dinners so i wanted to show you what we're eating because whenever i get like into a rut in the kitchen i always pull out a cookbook and just kind of like go through the manual <laughs> that way i'm you know continuously serving my family healthy options without further ado let's get into the video <laughs> The first recipe that we are making is chicken and sausage gumbo. This one is one of mine and my husband's absolute favorite recipes to make. It is so delicious and comforting and cozy. It just like warms you from the inside out. And on these windy, cold New Jersey days, this is exactly what I crave. Okay, so for this recipe, you need the okra. You need um, five to six cups of broth, so I have two of those. You will need some rotisserie chicken some andouille sausage, arrowroot flour, some tomato paste, salt, pepper, parsley, cayenne pepper, thyme, and then some celery, a green pepper, and a yellow onion. The first thing that we are doing is roasting up the okra. She recommends getting some frozen okra, so I had some of this in my freezer from the last time that I made it. But one of my favorite things about this book, aside from every recipe being so easy and absolutely delicious, is that she teaches you different techniques to try in your kitchen. So I have never roasted frozen vegetables before, but these come out so delicious each time. So if you enjoy cooking, this recipe and this cookbook would be such a fun one to try. And I think especially with the holidays coming up, this cookbook would make such a great gift for the cook in your life. Somebody else's onions make them cry and just like put my face in cold. It's so bad. And so now that the okra has roasted up perfectly, it's time to make the gumbo. I'm so excited. This dish is delicious and I'm so excited to share it with you. So we start by sauteing up all of those vegetables. And then the trick to this gumbo to make it Whole30 approved is this mis mixture. So you want to fill up, I think it's like a cup or so of chicken broth. I use bone broth because that's what I have. And then you're using two scoops of arrowroot flour to thicken it up as you would like cornstarch or flour to get that roux. This essentially is that roux and it is delicious. It's amazing that it's healthy and whole 30. Then you want to shred up the chicken. I just used a rotisserie chicken and get going. I don't know about you, but when I am cooking from a cookbook especially, I tend to season more with my heart and use my kitchen intuition more than like following the recipe bit by bit. That's like kind of how I like to be creative and fun in the kitchen. 
And if that sounds like you, it sounds like we are very similar. So if you're new, I hope that you choose to subscribe, give this video a big old thumbs up or drop a comment introducing yourself below. I love to chat with you in the comment section to get to know you just a little bit more, but thank you so much for being here. I make videos every Mondays and Fridays centered around homemaking. So typically cleaning, organizing, sometimes cooking because that is my passion, but I love to get to know you all and inspire you just a little bit week by week. So this recipe cooked up in no time. It was essentially chop your veggies, saute them up, add your meat and your sauce, and you're good to go. A simple weeknight delicious dinner. I beg you to try. It is so good. For a low carb option or whole 30 option, you'll want to add cauliflower rice, but I only had microwavable rice. So that is what we added and it was absolutely delicious. Okay, let's try this bad boy. It looks so good. So excited. I love gumbo. I'm gonna make sure I get everything. The chicken and the okra and the sausage and the rice. Look at that bite. Mm. 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 That is good. Mmm. Got my mouth, but so good. Thumbs up. This is a good one. And then right before you guys start to think it, <laughs> my kids are always offered this food, always. Like on their dinner plate, it's always whatever we're eating. Do they touch it, the, the toddler? Right now, it's always like, no, like I don't want that. That's gross, I don't want that. And I'm like, fine, you don't have to eat it. The baby, she's doing baby little weaning and she'll usually always touch it um, and try it. And actually most of the time she likes it. The only thing she doesn't like is curry, which of course, <laughs> it's like something I should have known. Um, but so I learned this off of Instagram. Like, I don't know who it was. So if you know who the person is, you can tag them in the comment section below. But I always serve my toddler a protein, a produce and a promise. So like breakfast is usually no struggle. I always do like scrambled eggs, um, or like peanut butter on toast, fruit. I mean, my kids like devour fruit. We always have berries and bananas. And then um, a promise, so like yogurt. She'll always have yogurt. So breakfast is usually very, very easy. Lunch is usually always peanut butter and jelly or like turkey and cheese roll up, something very simple. And then that way I know that she's eaten for the day. You know what I mean? Like she's eaten enough food for the day with snacks and stuff incorporated. And then for dinner, I serve her what it is that we're eating on like one third of the plate and then I will give her strawberries or yogurt or like lunch meat of some sort and fruit. You know what I mean? And then of course, like, hello, I'm like every other mom. I always serve my kids organically sourced boxed macaroni and cheese. We have different variations of it depending on the day. This is actually delicious. So Okay, so now for tonight's dinner, we are gonna have the best grain-free chicken, no Parmesan. So I'm gonna put mozzarella and Parmesan cheese on the kids and my husband's, but then for me, I'm just gonna avoid it. But let me turn you around and show you what you need. Okay, so for this recipe, you're gonna need boneless, skinless chicken breast. I got mine sliced thin tapioca flour and almond flour instead of breadcrumbs. You will need a little bit of paprika and garlic powder with parsley, two eggs, the trio of course, olive oil, salt, pepper, and then you'll need like um, a mar marinara sauce if you don't make your own. This is my favorite and I like the sensitive marinara. And then Parmesan and then you don't need Parmesan, you need mozzarella but I'm adding parmesan and then some fresh basil but it's gonna be yummy 
Okay, so I couldn't help myself. This recipe is my favorite. It is so delicious. My kids loved it. You're not gonna wanna miss this. So I did decide to add some spaghetti squash with it because I'm gonna use it for a later recipe anyway. So I figured why not get it done now at the beginning of the week? That way I have it as like a meal prep in my fridge. So I'm starting off by roasting the spaghetti squash. I always roast this on high, like a 425. Add a little bit of olive oil. Um, that way it doesn't get too watery and salt and pepper and I season all sides I rub all sides and then pop it in the oven for 30 minutes cooked side down and then 10 minutes flipped over and it comes out perfect every single time and then for this recipe you're gonna add two cracked eggs and she also recommends that you add a tablespoon of water to get it frothy that I had never tried before and I mean the chicken came out delicious so I would follow this recipe to a tea and then after you whisk it up you're gonna set aside another small dish to come up with like your quote-unquote breadcrumb mixture where we just use the almond flour for like the more gritty greeny texture and a little bit of tapioca flour to like adhere more to the egg and the chicken and then this spice mixture which tasted just like kind of like an Italian seasoning. I would probably add a little bit more Italian seasoning to it if you want more of like that Italian taste, but it was so incredibly delicious. And then the method is just very similar to how you would make normal chicken Parmesan. You take chicken breast sliced very thin, so either like buy it that way or pound it down with a pan or like a meat tenderizer, dip it in the egg, then dip it in the breadcrumb mixture set it on a plate aside, get your pan hot and ready to go, fry it up, and it was so delicious. Oh. I thought you'd always be mine oh, yeah. I guess our dreams fell asleep There's no passion in the comatose yeah. Baby going down, 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 down yeah. Baby going down, 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 down yeah. Tried so hard to stay afloat Yeah, we keep moving like the river goes yeah. Baby going down, 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 down Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought it's time I'm letting you go This time I know it for sure Just thought I should let you know so more, no. I got so high on a low That's when I love you the most Okay, so we fried up our chicken breast about three to four minutes each side until they were golden brown. And then I just added some of that rouse sauce to the top of each of them. I'm adding mozzarella and Parmesan cheese, topping it with some fresh basil, and then I'm popping it in the oven for about 15 minutes, just like her recipe says, and letting that cheese get extra brown and gooey and delicious. And then while it is cooking up in the oven, I am taking out the spaghetti squash, doing a flip and then placing it back in the oven and then I'll use a fork just to have it come apart and it is so good. But I have a question for you. What is a weeknight staple in your house? For us, I'm always getting chicken. I'm always making either a chicken parm or chicken fajita dish. My house just loves chicken, but I sometimes get in a rut and I like to get inspired about what other people are making. So comment below what's a dish you love to have in your house every single week. And then I am plating. So in our house, I like to keep my food a little bit more lower carb just because I sometimes don't have time for exercise and things like that. So I like to focus a little bit more on like what I'm eating. Um, and so I'm doing the spaghetti squash with a little bit of sauce on the side and a chick chicken parm. And then I'm serving my husband and the kids chicken parm sandwiches. So I just take a King's Hawaiian roll, toast it up, and then place, so it's like a little mini chicken parm slider. I feel like my toddler likes anything that's kind of mini, and so I just cut this up, and she really, really liked it. Oh, this time I know it 
Okay, now for the taste test. It's so good. Mmm, <laughs> oh, that's good. The chicken's really good. Okay, so tonight we are making crispy slow cooker carnitas. I am very excited about this because anytime Alex makes like Mexican food on her Instagram, I get really excited about it. <laughs> like my heart starts to beat really fast. I just love Mexican food. Um, and she like does such a great job. I mean, everything she makes is great, but you know what I mean. Let me turn you around and show you what you need. Okay, so for this recipe, I mean, Come on, how good does that look? So for the crispy slow cooker carnitas, which is on page, what does that say? 49. You need a boneless pork roast, some olive oil, the seasoning lineup is cumin, oregano, chili powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, some bone broth. Um, this is my coffee from this morning that is cold. Um, some fresh orange juice, lime, and a yellow onion with some garlic cloves. And this goes in the slow cooker that I'm so excited about. So I'm gonna whip this up. It says that it takes about either four hours and 30 minutes or eight hours and 30 minutes. Make everything disappear. Can play my favorite song. Put your rose colored glasses on. What if we stay right here? Make everything So we started off by squeezing some fresh orange juice and fresh lime juice. This really helps to break down the meat and tenderize it and just make it juicy and so delicious in the crock pot. And then I'm chopping up some fresh garlic, some fresh onions, and getting my seasoning mixture to do a nice rub on the meat. And the smell in my kitchen this day was like, ugh, mouthwatering. And that spice mixture was just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, some cumin, oregano, a little bit of paprika and garlic powder. And then I'm just whisking that up and getting it ready for the meat. And then for the crock pot, you'll need a little bit of um, some, I think it's just beef broth. I had bone broth. Adding in the orange juice, the lime juice, a splash of apple cider vinegar, those garlic cloves and just whisking it up and making it delicious so you want to start by drying off your meat and so patting it down with a paper towel this way the seasoning mixture sticks to it and it gets like that blackened really delicious texture on the outside Always pretty smiles are covering her face You know it is all lies You know it is all lies I find that there's like magic in cooking in the oven and then in a cast iron skillet by using your hands to season things. I feel like when you really work it and you make it with love, there's such a difference in the quality of your food. So after we've seasoned and um, blackened the pork in the cast iron, you're creating like a crust around the pork so that way the meat itself can stay really juicy and really tender as it breaks down in the crock pot. You're gonna put it in the crock pot and add your mixture juice to it and set it on low. While that's happening, you're gonna wanna saute up your onions and get them nice and juicy, caramelized and delicious. Once the mixture is added, then you'll pop the onions in the crock pot with it, set it on low for eight and a half hours, and you'll have a delicious 
um, meal for the night, which I love crock pot meals. I feel like they're so, so much easier <laughs> to just like set it and forget it. And eight hours later, it was like bubbly and delicious. And I'm making pork carnitas. So we have like our taco station set up. I think I did like some quesadillas for the kids. I had it a little bit of rice, but that meat was just so easily pull apart, perfect, delicious, delectable great meal and then over the weekend i'm gonna do a pork chili with the leftovers so this is a meal that you can freeze and then defrost at a later date or stretch it out and make it a completely different dish multiple times throughout the week so you can do like barbecue with this the tacos and then for the flour tacos i always like to burn them up a little bit obviously this is something that you're going to want to you know watch don't go checking your instagram story while you're you know making these but i love having a char in my uh, tortilla. I just think it's delicious. And a little splash of lime, oh, sour cream. It was perfect. All we need to put on is the radio. <laughs> the carnitas. I've already taken several bites because it took you so long for me to film this. It's really good. Mm. Oh my god. With the lime and the sour cream like fire okay so the next thing we're making tonight is like one of my most favorites i always pronounce it wrong salamino whiskey let me just turn you around and show you the recipe and what you'll need okay so what you need is a pork tenderloin some chicken broth apple cider vinegar salt pepper um, I'm using whiskey, but the recipe says if you don't want to use whiskey, you can use chicken broth, arrowroot flour, you know I cook with this all the time, some potatoes, paprika, lemon, and garlic, but this is my favorite, so I'm so excited to share it with you. This recipe is not only my favorite because it is so delicious and I've never tasted it before, but it's also my favorite because it is so fun to make. So. What you do is you get the opportunity to like smash your meat down using your cast iron skillet. So once you're done chopping up your pork tenderloin in like half inches, then you're going to place them on one piece of parchment paper and then put another piece of parchment paper on top, press it down and then smash with your cast iron. And it's like perfect after a long day of mothering and, you know, getting all that frustration out. And then when you're cooking the recipe, you get to cook with alcohol and whiskey. And I love to do that because it creates like that, like like sear that like they do at hibachi restaurants there's no flame but it's just a lot of fun so if you like to have fun in the kitchen i recommend this recipe um we're smashing up the garlic which creates like the most delicious like gravy sauce i can't explain it i've never cooked anything like this and it is really so fun and so delicious my little sous chef just came in to let me know that she needed more help with paint so if you're ever wondering like where my kids are during a lot of this um my husband is home he's working from home too so either he'll come downstairs and like you know take over or a lot of times i will try to cook during my baby's second nap of the day that way i can give my toddler like paint or crayons or something to do at the kitchen table while i get dinner started and ready for the night so it just makes things a little bit easier and it gives me kind of like a break in the middle of my day and then getting back to the pork as you saw we just seasoned it front and back with some salt and pepper and then put a nice coating of arrowroot flour on each, shook it off a little bit so it wasn't like overly dredged, and then popped it in a hot cast iron skillet, cooked it for about three minutes on each side and then flipped so they were nice and golden brown. And then I'm gonna remove these from the pan, put them on a plate and then create that delicious potato sauce mixture that is just so good. In this recipe book, she also has a one pot chicken pot pie pasta that is delicious. She cooks her pasta in um, chicken broth and almond milk versus water and it is it creates like this cr gravy sauce that's out of this world. This is like the fun part. As you saw, we added the garlic to toast that up, added the whiskey, and you're cooking that down all the way until they're, it's basically evaporated. Then you'll add your potatoes and two cups of chicken broth with a splash of apple cider vinegar, um, 
season that with a little bit of salt and pepper and then just kind of watch it, you know, keep an eye on it, stay in the kitchen. Um, but the potatoes will cook down in the broth and become delicious. That gravy that I keep talking about, I can't talk about it enough. It really is that good. Once they've cooked down, it's about 20 to 30 minutes. Then you can add the pork back in and then add a little squeeze of lemon juice, a little bit of paprika, and this dish is delicious. So I plated this and then I also just microwaved a bag of peas and carrots, served it up with some strawberries with that for the kids, and it was a great meal. Okay, so now we're tasting it, although I know what it tastes like and it's so good. Look at that. Mmm. So the potatoes are delicious. <laughs> They're really good. And the pork is really good too. Mm. Tonight I am feeling some spaghetti squash pad thai. Like how good does that sound? Typically I would do an order out or pizza or leftovers and that's kind of what I was going to do but I have the spaghetti squash in the fridge that I want to use up and I still have some chicken left over so I figured why not do an extra one and film it that way you have a little bit more inspiration in your kitchen this week so let me turn you around and show you okay so how beautiful does this look and this is what we need it's kind of a lot but you're making the sauce from scratch and it is so good it's worth it I promise so this was my cooked spaghetti squash from earlier for the pad thai sauce you need coconut aminos rice vinegar coconut milk some almond butter, this is the brand that I use, some sesame oil, some fish sauce, and some fresh ginger. I don't have Thai chilies, but I've made it with this red curry paste before, and it's good, so. <laughs> so I guess I'm like altering this recipe a little bit just to fit what my kitchen has right now. And then for the stir fry, you need a pound of boneless, skinless chicken breast. I bought the strips from Target. Salt, pepper, some of the air root flour again. Um, a red onion, matchstick carrots, so I'm just gonna make those smaller. You'll need two eggs, um, some garlic. So I'm starting off by making the pad thai sauce. The sauce is so delicious and it's actually really versatile. So like I've used it in other recipes, whatever I've had left over. And I'm actually making this recipe earlier in the day during the first nap time. So actually in the morning. Um, and then I'm just gonna pop it in the fridge and microwave it at nighttime for my husband and I because on Fridays we try to do a date night sort of, like after the kids have been put to bed, we'll have a meal together. It doesn't always happen because you know, kids but I do like to try to make that a thing for us because it's hard to get out to do a date night especially during a pandemic especially with two kids so anytime you can kind of make it a date date night at home I think it's really special and this is an easy recipe for that so another thing you can do with this pad thai sauce is make it early I mean look at that beautiful like orange brown color I feel like that's what pad thai needs to really look like but like I was saying so you can do the sauce early in the day and then keep it in the refrigerator it'll actually thicken up a little bit more and then just use it at night time when you need it so it's a really easy recipe i enjoy it after we've gotten the sauce together i am cutting up my vegetables and i'm actually adding a red pepper to it because i need to use it before it goes bad and i've made it with this before and it's really delicious after that, we are getting our chicken together, so seasoning it, seasoning it with a little bit of salt and pepper, and then just tossing it in some arrowroot flour, browning it up in a pan with light olive oil, and then setting that aside to stir fry the veggies and add that with the egg.
something, get it right. Gonna keep on running, grab the fun and live in life. gonna try bite right now out of the pot because it looks so good and I always only use these because these are the only ones that are ever clean. But, oh my gosh, look at that bite. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I'm stoked for dinner tonight. That's really good. So that's what I have for today's video. I hope that this video inspired you a little bit to get a little creative in the kitchen to healthify some of your recipes and if it has done nothing else I hope that you seriously consider this book and follow her along on Instagram because the Define Dish is where it's at for easy, weeknight, delicious, healthy dinners. I think that, that would make like such a good Christmas gift. I'm actually thinking about ordering a couple copies of this for like my mom and my sister-in-law and like doing it with like a nice bottle of wine or like maybe like a cute little like oven mitt set or something like that for Christmas. I just think that would be so easy. But I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Please remember to give it a big old thumbs up and drop me a comment below letting me know which dish was your favorite, maybe what you're trying. I'd love to chat with you guys in the comment section. But please subscribe if you're new and until the next video. Bye, friends.